man, do I really have to wear this? It's just so bad. All right, here we go. <clears throat> if you're like most public school educated Americans, you think that the Revolutionary War started something like this. The tyrant King George III started taxing tea and the patriotic colonists got together and dumped the tea in the Boston Harbor in protest. And when the king heard of this, he sent his troops, the Redcoats, and the colony united against the crown and the rest is history. In reality, this is a very diluted version of the history that implies a sort of proto-national unity amongst all the different social classes of the colonies. The reality is a bit more sobering and there are some hard truths. Personally, as a staunch adversary of fish and chips, I'm very glad the revolution happened. However, right up there with traditional bland cuisine, is my dislike of misleading whitewashed and oversimplified propaganda. I say tell it like it is and let the historian sort it out. It's time for my new distinctions. Let's first talk about the wealthy plantation owners who were angered by some of the provisions in the Navigation Act, which put a damper on their profits. Who exactly are we talking about? Well, the 13 colonies were divided into three sections, the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, and the Southern colonies. Due to the advantageous conditions of the topography, most of the plantations were located in the Southern colonies. For our historians at training, the Northern colonies, known as New England, focused on shipbuilding and fishing industries, whereas the middle colonies were trade centers where the ports that imported and exported goods were located. This fact will elucidate why the Tea Party took place in the Boston Harbor. But back to our story. In the colonies south of Pennsylvania and east of the Delaware River, known as the Southern Colonies, a few wealthy white landowners owned the bulk of the land, while the majority of the population was made up of poor farmers, indentured servants, and the enslaved. These few plantation owners were now subject to the Navigation Act of 1763, which basically said that there were several types of crops, particularly the kinds found in the southern colonies, that had to be sold to Great Britain, or at least had to be unloaded, inspected, and taxed there. The requirement to sell to Britain put the plantation owners at a disadvantage because the British ships would load up their cargo and take it to Britain. Once there, the British buyers could offer a low amount for it because it's not like the sellers of the goods, such as George Washington, could threaten to sell it elsewhere. So the hard truth here is that this restriction, while understandably frustrating, only affected a small percentage of the colonial elites. The wealthy colonialists did not like that they had no say in the law, thus clarifying the whole taxation without representation slogan. So why is the Tea Party so well known and referred to? A plausible explanation why the Tea Party is so often cited as the catalyst for the revolution is that it was a more universal tax that affected wealthy and poor alike because you're not really a colonist if you didn't like a cup of delicious tea. Next up, it wasn't just tea. The Townsend Acts were a series of laws passed by the British government in 1767 which imposed taxes on several imported goods including glass, lead, paint, paper, and tea which were widely used in the colonies. Now, nobody liked taxes and there was definitely a punitive aspect to the act but the next hard truth is that a significant reason for the tax increase was that the British government had been running up large deficits after spending a fortune protecting the colonies with a standing army and fighting previous wars there in addition to this colonists taxes were actually quite low only a fraction of what citizens in England paid the final hard truth we'll touch upon here is that while it's difficult to estimate the exact percentage of colonists who fought against the British during the American Revolutionary War some estimates suggest that around 20 to 25 percent of the population actively supported the revolution and bid for independence, while approximately 15 to 20 percent remained loyal to the British. The majority of the population, around 60 percent, were neutral or did not actively participate in the war effort. A little side note to elucidate this fact is that when learning about Paul Revere's famous ride, keen-eyed history students may have wondered about the feasibility of yelling that the British are coming, the British are coming, when the colonists themselves were British. So to recap, the cause for the Revolutionary War was that some elites amongst the colonists were angry due to trade restrictions that were rebranded as a taxation issue affecting the average colonists. This rebranding only convinced about one in four to do anything about it, probably because the tax rates were really not that high on the average citizen to begin with, and may have been seen as quite reasonable for the job that the British Army was doing to protect the colonies. I hope you liked this video. Be sure to check out our video on the Revolutionary War if you want to keep on learning. Please like and subscribe for more great content. Till next time.